Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the shear stress and in particular the average shear stress. So what is the shear stress? Well, let's take a look at the setup right here. Let's say we have two blocks and a third block that straddles the bottom two. If we take a look at it from an angle, you can see that we have the two blocks here and the second block on top. And let's say we apply a force perpendicular to the top surface of the top block. You can then see that it rests on the bottom two, and if we push hard enough, we're going to create what we call a shear stress on the inside of the top block, just directly above the point where the edge of the bottom two blocks are. In other words, if we could press hard enough, this portion of the top block would begin to sag, and if we continue to press hard enough, we could eventually push that part of that block down to where the opening is right here and keep the other two sides of that top block resting on top of the two bottom blocks. In other words, we can destroy that top block. So what happens before we destroy it, we begin to create a stress on the inside of that block directly above the edge of the bottom blocks. That extra stress right there is called the shear stress and it's defined by the amount of force that is pushed up against the bottom of the two blocks on either side of it, divided by the area of that region that's directly above the bottom block. So in other words, we take the response forces, we call that the shear forces, divided by the total area of that surface internal to that top block. So it's not actually an open surface, it's a closed surface inside, but you can see if you take the area here and divide that into the what we call the shear force, we have what we call the shear stress. Now in this case, since there's two sides here where we experience that shear, shear force and we have only one force pushing down on it, you can then see that the force is equal to twice the shear force or the shear force is one half the total force applied at the top. So in this case, the shear stress indicated by the letter tau is equal to the shear force divided by the area, which is half the force applied. So half on one side and half on the other side. Now if we take a closer look at that portion of the block, notice the top block goes on further in the back, we we'll imagine it to be cut on both sides. Not literally cut, but in our imagination, what does that look like? Well, we have those two sides on both sides of that block. We're talking about these two sides right in here which are now exposed in our imagination. They're not literally exposed. We didn't literally cut it. And then we take a look at that side and see what we see. When we come down here, we can imagine the shear force distributed across that imaginary side. And so this whole force is distributed among small little forces, all added together, form the total shear force. And then we take the shear force and divide it by this area. And then we have what we call the shear stress. And that's what we see there in that equation. Now, typically, because of what happens inside the material, the shear forces are not all identical, equal to each other. They will change depending upon what happens inside, and we're going to take a closer look at that later. But for now, what we're going to do is simply take the average shear stress by just imagining that the shear forces are identical everywhere along the side, and so we're going to simplify things for now that makes things easier to work with. So the average shear stress is simply the total shear force divided by the total area, then assuming that the total shear force is the same distributed everywhere equally along that imaginary edge or the imaginary side of that part of the block. And that's what we mean by the shear stress, or in this case, the average shear stress.